what prospects will be visiting Dinky Town this weekend for the first official visit and the new Big Ten scheduling drops today. What are the early thoughts before we get the official message? Hey, you are no locked happens, on Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota uh, Golden turns out, Gophers. Whatever turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. You are listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant here to talk Golden Gophers with you. And now we're into the summer months, the official off season, June and July are kind of where we tick down a little bit. Unless you tell me we need it each and every day and I will honor it, I will respect it and I will make it happen. But right now, I know there's a little bit of a, off the gas you know you're kind of letting it coast a little bit as we head into the offseason before football picks up full swing in August so right now we're planning on doing shows Tuesday Thursday Saturday when it comes to Gophers talk we'll probably throw in a couple weeks where we throw in an additional Wednesday show as well but I appreciate you all for listening find us wherever you get the podcast uh Stitcher Spotify Apple Pods you name it you can find us at Lockdown Golden Gophers and be sure to leave a five-star review and if you like the new visual platform over at YouTube with the new graphics package and all of that jazz then definitely be sure to hit subscribe over there and get involved in the community. I love hearing the different comments. I love hearing the different thoughts. In fact, the third segment of today's show is brought to you from an everyday listener who brought up the idea of talking about the Coach Fleck, the Coach Fleck coaching tree. Lots of coaches in there. But regardless, today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash lockdown college. And when you enter promo code lockdown college, they'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler with every order. Now, today we're diving into the official visit of this weekend, plus the new scheduling that will drop later this afternoon for the Big Ten. So we're going to dive into thoughts there, but let's kick it off with that OV number one. Now, who is headed here this weekend? What to know about the official visit number one? Well, the first thing is first, Wyatt Gilmore will be here on campus <clears throat> One of the best players in the state of Minnesota playing the edge position coming from Rogers, Minnesota. Now, his final five schools, his top five, the ones he is considering before he makes his decision are Kansas State, Miami, Minnesota, Oklahoma, and Oregon. That's a lot of big dogs in that talk. That is a lot of top programs, a lot of competition in there. So I don't know what the realisticness is of landing him. Is this Jackson Howard 2.0 where Minnesota's in there, but it just doesn't feel like we're truly in that consideration? Or is this a little bit different? I think it has tendencies of both. Now, if I had to go with my gut, I would say that Minnesota likely won't win out on this one, maybe a top name school like in Oklahoma ends up the final choice for Wyatt Gilmore. But the reason I believe Minnesota has a better chance than what we saw with Jackson Howard is the relationships that Wyatt Gilmore has with a lot of the current commits. You know, if your boys are constantly texting you, constantly chatting you up, you see them all the time, you visited the campus unofficially and officially a total of six times and then your boy Coy Parrish is hitting you up. Your boy, uh, who else we got? Simon Sedell is hitting you. Seidel is hitting you up. Uh, G-Day is hitting you up. A bunch of different players. Players from last year's class are all hitting you up like, dude, let's do this. We are building something. We got this. We're going to... We're going to break through in the Big Ten. If you have that consistently in your ear, and then you have great relationships with the coaches, with Coach Rossi, with Coach Fleck, with Coach Debo, you add all that together then maybe there's a chance. And you know what that meme is, the saying is, so you're telling me there's a chance. Well, I do believe there is one. We'll see if the Gophers can really show out and close in on that chance this weekend with Wyatt Gilmore. But there are other names that are going to be on this visit that haven't officially committed to the Gophers that will be in town as well. Samuel Madu, top cornerback from New York, great connection with Swag Daddy, a.k.a. Nick Monroe. 
I guess it would be the other way around, Nick Monroe, a.k.a. Swag Daddy, but you get what I'm saying. Now, he uh, he had mentioned, Samuel Madu, two rivals, Minnesota rivals, that the opportunity to play early is big time for him, and his main focus right now is likely on schools like Purdue, Michigan State, and Minnesota. Penn State is still in the conversation, maybe in the race, but they haven't been as active with him. So you're looking at a Big Ten battle here with Samuel Madu. He was very impressed when he last visited the Gophers in his brief unofficial visit while coming to town for a few hours. I believe he was here in total for about 17 hours. But you talk about him, you talk about the relationship he has with Nick Monroe, and then you talk about the fact that he's coming with another New York potential prospect, potential commit, I should say, in Jalen Hicks, a defensive lineman from New York, will also be visiting with Samuel Madu. Uh, They have a nice connection. He has a nice connection with Swag Daddy. And he mentioned to Minnesota Rivals after his unofficial visit in Minnesota that Minnesota was his favorite and he was looking, it looks like he's probably looking to make a decision by or prior to July 4th. Now he's got a great relationship uh, that is natural with Coach Debo, the defensive line coach as well. Coach Debo really seems to be popping up in these recruiting talks because I don't know how he couldn't. I'm telling you, this man's energy is infectious it makes you want to play for him run through a wall for him feels natural it feels real it feels raw and so I love what I'm seeing from coach Debo but also I love that all of these players in consideration are coming here with the timing of a lot of the current commits being on this official visit as well now two other names I got to bring up for this one include Mike Gerald a cornerback from Texas he was recently offered by the Gophers and locked onto an official visit pretty quickly as well he also recently earned offers from Kansas State from Utah both big threats but I don't think that they're the number one threats. No official visits scheduled with them quite yet. I think, honestly, when it comes to Mike Gerald, the cornerback from Texas with a lot of upside, biggest threat is the other Texas schools. We're talking your Texas Techs, your Baylors, your Texas A&Ms, uh, maybe even TCU. Texas, the University of Texas, the 40 Acres. Those are the schools I think that will be the most likely to be a huge threat in this conversation because it's home because he is planning on camping at other schools in that texas area later this summer as well so i think it's going to be probably a weight on a guy like mike gerald but hopefully you can stay in the conversation keep him top of priority and really dive in on that one and then the last name i want to bring up is dewan riggs Uh, Running back from the D.C. area, he has offers from Wisconsin, Oregon, Pitt, Maryland, and Old Miss, just to name a few. Uh, The Gophers have one running back in this class and a couple running backs from the last few classes, so they're keeping that running back room stocked and with a lot of talent, chock full, ready to compete and grind it out for the following years. So he is on an official visit with Minnesota as well this weekend. Now the positives for this first official visit. There are a ton of commits on this visit to bond with these potential teammates, to help encourage, help build something, the chemistry, the bonds, what have you with these guys in order to be like, look, we can be that class. We can be the difference maker. We can be what puts this Gophers program over the top. We look at those past three full seasons and look, nine wins, 11 wins, nine wins. Look, they can maybe make some noise and we can be the ones to help usher them to another double digit season. To We can be the ones to help usher them to some serious competition, maybe into a Big Ten Conference Championship game. That is what we can do as a class. Why not us? Why not now? That is what you can start to get, start to build the momentum with the rest of the class. When you've got 11 other commits from the 2024 class on this official visit, anything is possible, and you love to see the camaraderie building, the teamwork, the chemistry, like I said. So overall, I think the vibe and checking in on the camaraderie and a ton of commits being on this first official official visit is huge for these guys potentially considering the Gophers. On top of that, you've got great personal connections heading together on this official visit. You've got a ton of Minnesota commits that are from Minnesota here on this commit with Wyatt Gilmore, hopefully encouraging him to stay home as well. 
then you've got both New York guys who could maybe want to end up playing in the same spot, continue to see each other, continue to want to build something special with that connection they have with Coach Nick Monroe on the same visit. All of that working in tandem only plays in the Gophers' favor. But this isn't the only official visit. These aren't the only names to keep in mind. There is still a couple guys that maybe could sneak into this weekend's visit. Maybe they're looking at next weekend, or maybe there's another visit to be had in the future. But Jacob Simpson, a tight end from Iowa, is definitely a name still in consideration for the Gophers, as well as Emerson Mendel from uh, Irondale the offensive lineman could see their names added to an official visit very soon. So we'll keep an eye posted on them as we move forward. But it's a big interest for both of those guys in the Gophers. Now, next weekend's visit has some big potential prospects as well, but less already locked in commits. So it's a little bit different of an approach, a little bit different maybe of a selling point for the coaches and the staff there. And we'll touch on that more next week. But if Minnesota can walk away from this weekend with a commit of any of the three that I had mentioned that seem more realistic in the Wyatt Gilmore, the Samuel Madu, and the Jalen Hicks, if you can walk away from with a commitment from any of them, I think that is a win. Uh, I think it's Mike Gerald as well, but I think that one's probably going to take a little bit more time. But if Minnesota can make all of these guys feel like Minnesota is home, I'm almost ready or I am ready to make a commit. That is an absolute home run grand slam that you cannot dispute. Now, I don't think you're likely to hear an answer from some of these guys because there are other OVs on their docket, but we'll see what happens. Anything's possible, as they say. Now, what I want to dive into next is the Big Ten schedule, which is dropping for future years once we have the additions of USC and UCLA dropping today. That's right, today. So let's talk about what the potential is for Minnesota before we get the official word. But first, we have to talk to you about our friends over at Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs are those comfortable shorts and pants that you can find over at birddogs.com. And when you go over there, not only do I encourage you to get yourself a pair, but Bird Dogs has fi fixed the issue of not having comfortable shorts or shorts that ride up, bunch up and all of that because they invented cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. On top of that, they use anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. And then if you head on over to birddogs.com slash lockdown college and you place your order, you'll get one of these bad boys, a custom Yeti tumbler for your coffee, for your water, for whatever you need on the go. Definitely head on over to birddogs.com slash lockdown college to check that out today. All right, Gophers fans, thank you so much for listening to Locked On Golden Gophers and making us your first listen when it comes to Gophers Daily Sports. Now, let's talk about this new Big Ten scheduling that is going to drop this afternoon. Now, according to The Athletic, it sounds like there will be a flex protect model when it comes to the scheduling, which means you play up to three protected annual opponents while cycling through the rest of the league's schools over multiple years. Now, it's not quite the 3-3-6 model that your boy prefers, and a lot of people out there had talked about over the years, uh, which was three non-conference opponents, three locked-in rivals, and then six other Big Ten opponents on the year, and that format would allow a Big Ten team to play each team home and away within the course of four years. But you could say this flex protect is maybe a lighter version of that, the diet version of sorts. Why not Why not at least lock in that 3-3-6 model? Well, at least this flex protect leaves the door open for more non-conference play, like the SEC is debating by going to eight conference games or you could go the opposite way as well and want to play more conference games, take away non-conference. There's a different things up in the air as well as the, the case for it is that they want to be able to have the ability to shift scheduling priorities as well to make sure that things are staying parity and, and competitive. And so we'll see what happens with it all. I think we're going to get a lot of answers tonight. But regardless, the big question becomes... That the flex protect model says up to three 
locked in rivals. But what does that up to mean? Does that mean everyone's going to have at least two? Does that mean some will only have one? Does that mean most will have three? I think that's the first question you're looking at with this flex protect. Now, my gut tells me it would be two to three, depending on the schools and their rivalry matchups. Some will have more, some will have less. But the second question is, who will those rivals be, especially when it comes to Minnesota? Now, when you're talking about Minnesota and the Gophers, <clears throat> I, th I hope... I pray, and for all things that are holy, you'd have to imagine there is no way that we don't have Wisconsin and Iowa landed as our locked-in rivals every given year, right? Right? Absolutely. It has to happen. If it doesn't, there will be outrage. There will be outcries. There will be people with pitchforks, stakes, and torches at the Big Ten offices in Chicago. I don't think they want that. So I would imagine that those two are locked in as Minnesota rivals, but will they have a third or will it just be those two? Now, one could argue if they're trying to play for parity that maybe those two are tough enough that you don't add a third, but then you could also look at the fact of Minnesota probably has the most rivalry game, historic trophy games of any of the schools in the Big Ten. So why wouldn't you keep those going and keep those happening consistently? Now, if that were to happen, then they would make sense to be a school with three rivals if all those schools don't already have three. But who becomes the third then? Is it Michigan? Is it Penn State? Is it Nebraska with our fake bowl game or uh, trophy game with the $5 bits of broken chair? I know. I know Nebraska isn't seen as an official trophy game, but I would be curious to see what the decision looks like, especially as that rivalry has been budding of sorts over the years. Now, honestly, I think Nebraska is going to be paired with Iowa, of course, because they seem to have a really strong uh, rivalry. I think that Wisconsin one is pretty strong, and I would not be surprised to see Nebraska get paired with one of the LA schools due to it being the first wet or furthest west in geographic location, but also with a massive fan base and a market draw for TV stations because of how massive across the country their fan base is. I wouldn't be surprised to see them paired with an LA school. But of those three that I mentioned, the Michigan, the Penn State, and the Nebraska, I would guess to take a look at the games played in these series, you've got a, uh, officially for the trophy, 104 games versus Michigan, 63 games versus Nebraska, and 15 versus Penn State. So if I'm going to go with my gut, I would say Michigan would be that third rival. Now that could be a very daunting every year type of opponent. Now uh, the thing that they're slightly trying to break up and make it more parity, more fair for every team. So maybe they don't go that route. Maybe that's why they only go two for Minnesota. I think overall we'll see, but Michigan will obviously have Ohio State. They'll obviously have the inner bat, interstate battle with Michigan State. Uh, could Penn State take priority over Minnesota as a rival for Michigan? Well, maybe in these recent years, we've seen that tough competition between those two schools, but I believe, again, the goal of this scheduling is to shoot for more parity. So maybe that will negate uh Michigan taking on Penn State and in Ohio State each and every year. Uh, maybe that's a reason why Michigan doesn't land as a yearly thing for the Gophers. Maybe that trophy still becomes limited like it has been since the two got split into different divisions. There's a lot up in the air, and we can only speculate here, but one thing is for certain. We absolutely, we absolutely need Minnesota locked in with Wisconsin and Iowa. Anything beyond that? We'll understand it goes either way. We'll take it. But if those two are split from Minnesota, I, I can't tell you what's going to go on. I can't tell you the outrage that will be experienced. And I don't think the Big Ten wants that. Now, the scheduling again drops today at 3.30 Central Time. We will definitely be in tune and tapped in. And we'll have another show on Saturday to follow up with thoughts, with ideas, with uh, what who got the best draw, who got the worst draw when it comes to the rivals and so much more. So definitely be sure to subscribe over on YouTube so you don't miss that talk on Saturday's show. Now, the final thing that we're going to talk about here is a uh, topic that we got from an everydayer. So if you're not tapped in everyday listening or tapped into each show, we've, we're having three shows every week in the offseason and we're five shows a week 
during the season as well. So be sure to hit subscribe over on YouTube. Let me know the thoughts you want to hear when it comes to these shows moving forward. The final topic is Coach Flex Coaching Tree, immediate thoughts, where people have gone, how the success has played out, and more to close out today. All right, Gophers fans, let's wrap this up. We're talking about Coach Flex Coaching Tree and where uh, the coaches have gone, the ones that have been priority mainly with Coach Fleck and moved forward to other opportunities. Now, the deeper I dive in and the more I find myself asking really what makes a coach a part of a coaching tree? And to me, it comes down to three things or a combination of those three things. Now, the first thing is it's their first real shot at a higher level or a position of substantial responsibility. So maybe you're coming from another program as a quality control, as an offensive assistant, defensive assistant, you uh, graduate assistant, what have you. Now it's your first time to really take a shot at a positional coach role. That could be the first reason on how you start to fall into a coaching tree because that kind of builds your roots into how you move forward with your ideas and your thought processes and how you like your style of play. Not all the time, but it plays a factor. Number two is that they coach there for multiple years and develop their reputation with that program before taking on big responsibility or promotion elsewhere or maybe in that same program. Finally, it's the growth, the development, and the promotion within the same staff and system. I think those three things, or at least a combination of them sometimes, is how you get a coaching tree. So with all of that in mind, what are the real coaches within Coach Flex Coaching Tree? Well, the first name I looked at was Maurice Linguist. Uh, I'm not really sure that you can consider him a Coach Flex Coaching Tree coach because he didn't really have much experience here with the program. He did one year with Coach Fleck and he'd been in a similar role prior. So years prior, he had been in the same exact coaching role uh, for different universities. And I believe another one of those was a P5 school as well. So it's just like, you've already had the experience. You've already had that learning. You've already had the tendencies grown and the reputation built outside of working with Coach Fleck. So that one, I don't think you can count. The same goes for Mike Sanford Jr., again, someone who had been to Utah State prior to his time with the Gophers in the capacity of coaching as the quarterback's coach, had a little bit of offensive coordinator uh, experience as well out there. Then he comes here to Minnesota, does that for two years. Then he goes on to Colorado, does that for a year. So I don't think you can count those coaches as part of Coach Flex coaching tree, but the one that comes to mind immediately is is Coach Kenny Burns, the running back coach for Coach Fleck for so long now, not only for a year or two out in Western Michigan, but also here the entire time with the Golden Gophers. He's turned out a ton of talent. He's gained a ton of respect for the running back room here in Minnesota. Now, don't get me wrong. The previous running back coach also was a rock star. So the running back has been a tradition, tradition for Minnesota for years and years and decades at this point. But Kenny Burns absolutely showed out, and now he's moving on to a head coaching position with Kent State. So I would say that is definitely one of the coaches, one of the buds, the branches breaking out from the Coach Fleck coaching tree. And we don't have a whole lot on his success thus far because this will be the first year that he is a head coach for another program. Now, another coach that I believe could potentially be seen as a Coach Fleck coaching tree is Coach Harasimic, uh, Minnesota safeties coach uh, a while back, I believe in 2019 is when he came on board. It could have been 2018, but he was a safeties coach here. Then he moved on to a co-defensive coordinator while coaching some DBs here. And then now he is the defensive coordinator at Rutgers. Now one could think, well, Shiano, uh, Coach Fleck came the Shiano tree, right? So couldn't this guy just be a part of the Shiano tree and he went back to Rutgers? Well, it doesn't seem like he really had any affiliations or connections with Shiano prior to his time with Coach Fleck. So one would actually think that he kind of, Coach Fleck maybe helped usher him into that position, helped usher him into the opportunity with the connection with Shiano and with the, um, 
what he had put on display with Minnesota, the reputation he had built here. So I think I would put him on that Coach Fleck tree as well. Now, Rutgers defense definitely showed moments in spurts last year. They put up some fights with some schools that you wouldn't expect they would have been in the fight with last year. And hopefully we'll see some more improvement from them as they move forward as well and like to see success for him at that defensive coordinator position. Another coach I want to mention is Clay Patterson. First FBS P5 shot was with Coach Fleck as a tight end coach from 2018 to 2021. And now he he went uh, with Sanford to Colorado, ended up being a co-offensive coordinator eventually, and is now at USF in that tight end role. But I do believe kind of that long term, that reputation, that trajectory was building here with Coach Fleck and the Gophers. So I I like to usher him into that tree, but maybe it's less of a branch, a smaller branch of short sorts than Burns and Hare Semic. Now, the other coaches that you have to talk about are the ones still with the program. And these are the ones where I really think the tree is blooming and budding and growing these branches, but they're still here. And you talk about Joe Rossi, who started as a quality control coach in 2017 and is now a defensive coordinator that has been absolutely setting the big 10 on notice, setting the nation on notice with the defenses he's been churning out here in Minnesota. Lord knows he's going to have an offer elsewhere in the next few years. I'm surprised that we've been able to keep him here for so long, but that is because we value and know how much value he brings to this program. I expect the program to keep throwing money his way and hopefully fend off others. The only way I can maybe see him moving on is for a P5 head coaching offer elsewhere. Hopefully we still have a couple more years, a few more years with Coach Rossi, who has been an all-star as he's progressed in his coaching ranks. Then you've got Coach Danny Collins. He started out as uh, he was in Western Michigan with Coach Fleck. I believe he was a grad assistant for a while. He moved on to quality control here in Minnesota in 2017, and then he was there for a while, and now he's moved his way up to a positional coach with the safeties. He's been working with some great safeties in Tyler Newbin, in Jordan Howden. We'll get to see him working fresh with guys like Coleman Bryson and Darius Green in the upcoming year as well, and Gowsby has shown some nice progression over the last couple of years in the off seasons as we see him in the spring and whatnot. I like what I've seen from Coach Collins. I expect to continue to see him grow within the program. So those are two guys internally that are still building, still growing, still budding. You've got Greg Harbo, who also has come from the more uh, grad assistant role, developed into quality control, developed into a positional coach, and now he's a co-offensive coordinator for the Gophers this upcoming season with Matt Simon, who is another name to mention that has been kind of along the way with Coach Fleck, went off to his own opportunity back with Western Michigan, then came back to the Gophers as well. I think that those two have been kind of growing branches, budding, and again, co-OCs there. You've got the DC and Joe Rossi. All of them have been growing from within the program, within the system. And then you've got Brian Callahan who continued growth and continues to take off development over with Western Michigan and now Minnesota years. He's come to be known as one of the best at his developing his position group, especially with the offensive line right now. All of those have so much potential and could see themselves working in other larger facets in the years to come but to see the growth and the success that they've had over the years with coach fleck i think those are the true branches that are growing and eventually will start to be big time coaches elsewhere and get opportunities at head coaching shots down the line now others on that tree finally that i want to bring up rob wenger he started again as one of those grad assistants moved his way up to a special teams assistant and helping with that sort of thing and now he is the special teams coach and so he'll continue to develop he was with coach fleck at western michigan now with him here at minnesota as well and then the final name we've got to talk about is winston d a unique tree branch as far as he was a player grown within the system playing with coach fleck, or playing for coach fleck in minnesota playing for coach rossi and he went on to learn more outside of the program and different coaching stops along the way for a couple years and now he is getting a bigger shot with the staff he grew with in the power five his first power five positional coaching experience and I think if you asked him personally he would probably put himself in the category of being 
in this coaching tree. And I think the best is yet to come for him. Honestly, if Coach Rossi was to take on a head coaching position in, say, two years from now or so, I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Debo had put his name into the running and the trajectory of being ready for something like a co-defensive coordinator at some point in time. So definitely some promise with the coaching tree, definitely some success so far with guys like Kenny Burns, Clay Patterson, and whatnot. That is going to do it for us today at Locked on Golden Gophers. Who, What coaches did I miss? If I missed any, drop them down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on who Minnesota's rival should be. And if a third one is in there, who will it be? And how excited are you for the OVs? That's going to do it for us. I'll see you on Saturday where we'll dive into the schedule talk even more. Row the boat, Skyima, go Gophers, and don't forget to subscribe.